What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Aaron and today we're gonna to go over 11 ETFs that outperform the S&P 500. At the end of the video, I'm gonna show you a back test of all these ETFs put together in a portfolio and you'll be amazed just as I was how far and above this portfolio performs above the S&P 500. And I think there's good reason for that, mainly because a lot of these ETFs are invested in future technologies and technologies that are really advancing every single year. So let's look into these 11 really cutting edge ETFs you can add to your portfolio to really add some growth to your portfolio. So the cutting edge sectors that we're gonna be investing in are next gen innovation, China internet, then we have EV market, so electric vehicles, then we have robotics and AI, then we have cloud computing, then we have fintech, and last but not least, we have geometric revolution and telemedicine. These are the cutting edge industries, the ETFs that we need to be investing in for the future to add that growth to our portfolio. So starting off with number one, we have ARKK. This is an ARK Innovation ETF, and this is where we're starting out. And first, let's look at the holdings. So we can see Tesla's right up top with almost a 10% weighting, then Roku, Teladoc Health, Square, CRISPR. This is basically a combination of all those cutting edge um, companies that are sparsed out in a lot of other ETFs, all in one ETF. So if you wanna buy one future cutting edge ETF, then this is probably it. ARKK from ARK Invest. And you can see how well it's performed as well. So over the past year, it's up about 152%, which is staggering. Three years, 52%, and five-year average is 46%. So this alone vastly outperforms the S&P 500, and it's largely because it's made up of all these cutting-edge companies. So you can buy this one ETF and then get invested in all these cutting-edge companies, be well diversified through all these more risky stocks. They are a little bit more risky, but because you're buying an ETF, you're gonna be well diversified. So that's ETF number one. Also, they have about 17 billion under management. So this is a massive ETF, an expense ratio of 0.75, which is under that 1% threshold, which I like to basically use as my line in the sand that I really don't like to go above. So it's below that. So, I mean, this is a perfect ETF to buy, and I'm definitely gonna be adding this to my portfolio. I'm actually gonna be adding all these ETFs to my portfolio. I sold a lot of my stock, and I'm gonna be uh, moving it into these ETFs. So next up, we have ARKW, and this is our next generation internet ETF. Again, this is gonna be that future internet really gonna put you in those growth stocks that are growing extremely rapidly that you need to be in to add that growth to your portfolio. So this fund as well is from ARK Invest and there's 5.2 billion under management. So still a massive fund. If we look down, let's look at what it holds. Tesla again, Teladoc, Square, Roku, a lot of the same stocks. But what's interesting is this one has a Grayscale Bitcoin Trust ETF. Now I hold the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust in my IRA, but it's interesting to see that in an ETF. Um, I don't think that trust is part of a lot of other ETFs. So that's something that's very unique about this ETF. If you buy ARKW, you're gonna get exposure to Bitcoin just by buying that ETF and you're gonna have that growth of Bitcoin in your portfolio. So that's gonna add so much growth to your portfolio. And it's a very easy way to participate in Bitcoin. So ARKW is the next one. All right, now let's move on to KWEB. This one is KWEB or KWEB, and this is China Internet. This one, where is net assets? So 4.2 billion under management, expense ratio of 0.73 under that 1% threshold, and this stock invests here are the top 10 holdings you have 10 cent i don't even know some of these names um, alibaba i know pinduo i know jd.com jd.com is an interesting one as well it's kind of like amazon um, but smaller and i think they do more retail i don't think they have um, like an aws type business baidu that's an interesting one so by buying kweb you're going to get exposure to all these stocks and I think the performance of this has been fantastic as well. Oh, there it is, 20, 16% per year. The five-year average and since, incep since inception, 17%. So that's vastly outpacing the S&P 500, which is about around 8%, 8 to 10% per year. 
So by buying this, you're gonna add a lot of interesting stocks to your portfolio that in other, in other words, you wouldn't really be able to buy. Um, a lot of these stocks you can't buy or they're trading as ADRs in the US. Um, so by buying KWeb, that's gonna add some very unique stocks to your portfolio. Next up, we have DRIV. EV stocks, autonomous vehicles, we all know this is a massive industry and a, a huge future growth driver um, over the next decade. Probably all vehicles are gonna transfer to electric at some point. Obviously Tesla being the leader, but then we have GM following, Ford's investing heavily as well. And we also have LI and uh, NIO over in China, who's a leader as well over in China. So for drive, let's see how much net assets we have 700 million net under, so not a billion, that's actually smaller than I thought. But the total expense ratio is still pretty low at 0.68. Then let's look at average annualized return since inception, 23%, that's, that's amazing. Um, and then I, I assume last year, yeah, last year did really well because Tesla and a lot of, and all the EV stocks actually. So it's interesting actually to see that Microsoft is the top holding of this. Then you have Alphabet, Intel, Qualcomm, Apple, there's Tesla down at 3%. I thought Tesla would have been would have been higher up on that list. Nvidia, Toyota, Micron, Cisco. So it looks like this, um, this ETF is investing in a lot of the companies who support EV stocks as well. Not necessarily the makers of the cars, but the, the, the software providers and, and the support system behind EV stocks. So that's pretty interesting to see. So the next ETF is a lithium battery ETF, LIT. Again, this is going with the electric car theme. We all know that it's coming, we all know it's a massive trend over the next 10 to 20 years. So LIT, you're gonna be, be, be investing in the main material that it takes to make these batteries. Let's see how much under management this has. Net assets, 2.7 billion. I think this is a pretty old fund. Yeah, inception date was uh, 2010. So this is one of the older ETFs actually on this list. It might be the oldest actually. Average annualized return of about 8% since, incep since inception. Um, so that's about the same as the S&P 500, but I assume that that's gonna be picking up um, pretty rapidly. If we look at the, what is the five year? Yeah, that's 27%. So I assume that's gonna be increasing as we go go forward because in 2010 to 2015, um, that the EV market really hasn't didn't take off yet. It wasn't only until maybe 2016, 17, where it really started picking up and that's only gonna accelerate into the future and that demand for lithium is gonna absolutely skyrocket as, as we're seeing more electric cars come online. And for the individual companies, I don't really know many of these. Okay, you have Samsung and Tesla, but a lot of these other ones I would, I would assume, oh, right here, okay, offers efficient access to broad basket of companies involving, yeah, lith lithium mining, lithium refining, and battery production. So I guess that's where Tesla comes in with the battery production, but you're also gonna get exposure to the miners and the refiners. So really the whole, um, the whole, uh, the whole product line from mining all the way to the finished product, the finished lithium ion battery, you're gonna get exposure to that by buying this ETF, LIT, and have it in your portfolio. I think that's, I mean, that's an amazing one. I'm definitely gonna add that. That's the only basic material that I would ever wanna own really in my portfolio. The next one is Robotics and Artificial Intelligence ETF. B-O-T-Z. This one, let's see how much under management it has. It has about 2.5 billion under management. So it's a pretty big fund. Then if we look down, average annualized return since inception, 21.5%. That's a huge outperformance. So this, I don't know this top company actually. I know Nvidia, a lot of these I actually don't know. And that's, I guess, a good thing. Part of this is, is almost like a thematic investing. You're investing in the theme of robotics. You don't necessarily have to know every single individual company when you're buying ETF. That's one of the beautiful things about it. When you're thematically investing, you can say, okay, I think this theme is gonna be very strong in the future. I wanna get exposure to that. So I would think robotics is gonna be very strong in the future. AI is gonna be very strong in the future. How can I get exposure to that theme? You can just buy the, this ETF and that'll give you exposure 
to that theme and add it to your portfolio. And what's the expense ratio? 0.68. So there you go, under 1%. Next up, ARKQ. And this is Autonomous Technology Robotics as well, another robotics ETF. This one has 1.7 billion under management. The expense ratio is 0.75. Five year average is about 33%. One year, one year is 100%. Interesting to see Tesla's at number one. Then what do we have? Baidu, JD, Deer. Deer is interesting to see. Alphabet and the others I don't really know. Taiwan Semi I know. So yeah, with these thematic investing stocks, the themes, you can just add these to your portfolio and get exposure to the entire theme. Wow, 3D printing, energy storage, space exploration, that's pretty cool. Autonomous transportation, robotics, all these themes I wanna have in my portfolio. All right, next one, cloud computing. C-L-O-U. We all know how popular cloud computing is. So this one has 1.5 billion under management. So average annualized return is about 63% since inception and it's about 77% since the beginning of the year. Again, fantastic performance. Then a lot of these companies I don't know. Again, I know Proofpoint, Twilio, Dropbox, uh, Shopify, but the others I don't really know. And that's perfectly fine. That's why we're investing in ETFs. I don't need to be a genius. I don't need to know every single stock. I can just like the theme and trust that Global X is doing a good job. They have very smart people picking these stocks for their ETFs and they make money when they have a good a good ETF that performs well because that attracts more money under, under management. So it's in their best interest and my best interest to have a very well built fund. Next up is FINX, a FinTech ETF. This one has, what is it? 1.7 billion under management, 0.68% exp expense ratio. Wow, this, this performed about 31% since inception over the last year, about 54%. Now, what is in here? So Square, that makes sense. Square has been, I think they're up over 100% in the past year due to, I think, their exposure to Bitcoin, um, largely. Same with PayPal. And I think those are probably the, the, the big growth drivers to this ETF. And again, this is another way that you can get exposure to Bitcoin is by buying ETFs that hold Square, hold PayPal, which those companies, Square and PayPal, have large exposure to Bitcoin as well. PayPal, for instance, um, you can actually buy Bitcoin and store it within your PayPal account, and they're buying large amounts of Bitcoin. So that's another way that you can get great Bitcoin exposure to your portfolio. Another ARK ETF. ARK is very popular, um, especially for these future, very innovative ETFs. I think they're, they're the best, they're the go-to for these, these ETFs. So another FinTech ETF, I would assume they hold a lot of the same stocks. Yeah, Square number one, then 10 cents up there. That's interesting. Zillow's up there, which is interesting. Um, what else? Pinterest, that's good to see. I'm, I'm a big fan of Pinterest. I'd like to see that in here. So the, some of the, re the reason that I have um, maybe two ETFs within the same sector, like two ETFs within FinTech, is because you're gonna get more diversity between the stocks that you own. You're gonna get a little bit more diversification. So that's why I think it could be a good idea to have two of these ETFs within one, within one sector. Last but not least, we have a Genetic Revolution ETF, ARKG. And this one is very interesting as well. So this has 7.6 billion under management. This is one of ARK Invest's most popular ETFs because it's very unique to them. Then if we scroll down, we can see their holdings, Teladoc Health, Twist, Pacific, Cardex, Exet. I don't even know a lot of it. Regeneron, I know. CRISPR is very popular, Vertex. So a lot of these are biotech companies, um, which you would expect. And the five-year performance is about 36%. Um, and I think this is going to accelerate going into the future. You can see the one year performance is 180%. Genomic revolution stocks, I think, are on the cutting edge of a whole developing industry, kind of like EV stocks were a few years ago. I think we're going to hit, we might be hitting it within the last year, um, basically an inflection point where all these stocks really start to take off as technology evolves and becomes uh, more widely accepted and used throughout the industry. So these are the 11 major ETFs that I think that you need to have in your portfolio. So now let's look at the back test so I can show you just how well these did outperform in the S&P 500. So I only included the ETFs here where there was enough time to back test them because some of them started maybe a year or two ago. 
So that's not enough time to back test it that well, so I excluded those because I wanted at least two to three years of, of data to back test it. So th these are the ETFs that I included, and here we have the spiders as our control. So portfolio one is 100% in SPY, portfolio two is just divided up between several of these ETFs. Here's what we need to look at. So portfolio one, remember this is 100% in SPY, portfolio two is our ETF portfolio that's divided between all those, I think 11, or now for this, I think it's maybe eight ETFs. So the final balance, look at the difference, 17.8 versus 43,000. 43, that's a huge outperformance. Then this is basically the average um, annualized return of the portfolio, about 15% for the S&PY, then 43% for our portfolio made up of these ETFs. That's a massive outperformance. Um, that's why I'm basically switching a lot of my individual stocks to these ETFs because there's no way that I could ever outperform these ETFs with a 43% average annualized return over three or four, three years. Then we can also look at the Sharpe ratio. So this, the Sharpe ratio is a great ratio to know that basically will show you the your risk adjusted return. So every, for every unit of risk, it's showing you how much return you're getting for that. So the higher, the better, because it basically warrants, the, the, the return warrants the amount of risk that you're taking. So we can see for portfolio two, which is our ETF portfolio, we had a 1.5 Sharpe ratio. And for the SPY, we had a 0.88 Sharpe ratio. So just looking at the sharp ratio alone, we can say that portfolio two is way better. I mean, almost like two, almost two times better uh, than the S&P 500. And then worst year, we can see we had um, a bigger drawdown for portfolio two, which is expected because it's you're, you're investing in more volatile ETFs than just the S&P 500. But the sharp ratio is telling you that that risk is worth it. So this is this is really interesting, and I'm I'm really happy that. I went through and looked at all these ETFs and I'm gonna add these all to my portfolio and I get to share them with you. And I think they could be great in your portfolio as well. Maybe just build a whole portfolio around these because you, all you have to do is buy like 11 ETFs and you're gonna be fully diversified. You're gonna pay under 1% and you're gonna outperform the S&P 500 and be invested in, in industries and companies that are cutting edge and leading leading the world. Um, it's, a, it's a win, win, win. I don't see where the downside is here. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. Definitely think about it. Think about adding these to your portfolio. All right, guys, that's it for me. I hope you liked the video. I hope you like these ETFs. Definitely think about adding them to your portfolio. And I hope I see you in the next video. Remember to like and subscribe. My name is Aaron. Peace.